Welcome to the LA Story Podcast with Stevie Wilson. Hey people, this is Stevie for the LA Story. And we're talking to Jay Cause. And Jay has an interesting history, I suppose. Or, um, how can I put it, Jay? Story. Yeah, yeah, story. It's a really interesting story. He's a chef. And if, I'll have the video embed within the blog so you can actually see the one, the video they put together, which is really cool. And his cooking and things like that. But he's created a killer menswear line, which I absolutely love because he gets the whole idea of men as men dressing well, but not so seriously, yes. which is really interesting that somebody gets that part. So when did you come up with this concept? I mean, I, I think it, I, it's not something I came up with. It was something that I just always had, that concept. That's how I always, I, that's how I went through life as a child just um, a passion for anything creative. I'm sort of like a creative junkie, as I talk about in the video. And so that goes from anything from cooking to travel to clothing. And um, I think that they're all interrelated, um, especially uh, with men who, in the, I guess in the past, never were really told that they should embrace these things. Um, I guess at least in the last 20, 30 years. Old school, I mean, men cooked, men cared about the way they looked. Um, they liked to be tailored and liked to wear color. And for some reason, the last decade or two, men's wear has been very boring, very black and um, sad colors. And I've always felt that clothing should be fun and bright. And that's, uh, that's always been my philosophy. So you're going to take over the world of menswear I, I, and reconfigure it. I hope so. I hope so. I think that's I, a great idea. My goal would be more to um, teach men, hopefully with me as one of the tools that they use to embrace um, food, fashion, whatever whatever it might be, but to you have to find yourself in clothing. You can't um, let a stylist just dress you up. You have to find yourself and then you go into a, a brand like mine and find how you make that brand part of you. Right. And I think that's the difference between a really well-dressed uh, guy and a guy that's wearing nice clothing. Two very different things. Well, when the clothing wears you, yeah, you've absolutely. lost your personality. A hundred percent. I always say style you can't purchase. You can purchase beautiful things, but you can't purchase style. Right. You either have it or you don't. And you have to absolutely feel your own personality within the, the style of clothes. Yeah. And if you use a stylist, which I think is okay, your stylist should more um, try to find that in you. Your stylist almost needs to spend a month with you and get to know who you are before they can go and shop for you. Well, the, they have to understand the sense of humor. Absolutely. Because the guy who has the dry, witty sense of humor, almost English humor, yes, is a totally different guy than some of the people out here in LA. Yeah. I mean, not that they are, there aren't those that have both and combine them well, it's just not often. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And those who live on the East Coast who are in the suit business <laughs> and, and wear suits all the time, come on, you know, they can do something different. And I, it's like that jacket you were wearing in the video, the uh, plaid. The plaid jacket, yeah, that's a killer jacket. That was, that was really like bold and edgy and fun. But the fit was still there. And that's always been the philosophy of my brand in the sense that you can mess with color, but you don't really mess with shape when it comes to menswear. That's very cool. So when did this actual idea come to start coming to fruition? When did you go to work on it? I, I think it, I, as far back as I can remember as a child, I've always been fascinated by men's clothing. Um, and then when I was maybe 16, 17, I started to buy closeouts of some of the big famous brands and I would go to high-end flea markets and sell um, Ralph Lauren, J. Crew, Banana Republic, 
and set up in these very kind of waspy, preppy marketplaces um, in Pennsylvania and South Jersey and um, Connecticut. That was my first taste of retail. And then um, after that, I you know, started to design men's ties. Um, I started with denim and then I opened up a shop and just you know, kept growing the brand from there. Okay, so give me a time frame of when you opened up the shop. I opened up the shop 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Seriously? Yeah, I think I was 23 or 24. I forgot how old I am. I'm 39. So. Wow. Yeah. And we're just now hearing about this? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised that it would take this long. Well, I think whenever you do something right and do it well, it takes time. Making a big splash immediately um, is usually... Um, maybe not all the, the ingredients are really there for making a true brand. That's true. I mean, you have to, it does take thought and evolution and growth. And also, I think I'm always sort of ahead of um, my time a little bit. You know, I, I, I do things that when I first do them 15 years ago, 16 years ago, I had every color corduroy in my store when I first opened pink, purple, orange, green, yellow. Americans viewed it as preppy, they viewed it as um, odd, what kind of man wears pink corduroys. This was very European in a way. And it was not a, um, a baggy kind of Brooks Brothers type pink corduroy that you'd wear to a country club. This was a fitted, flat front um, pink corduroy that was very chic. Um, for the first two years that I did that, people that understood it, people that traveled to Europe a lot, they understood it and they bought it. But on a regular basis, I'd get people in and out of the shop making fun of it and being very uncomfortable with it. And today you see this in The Gap, Banana Republic, J. Crew. They all have pink, purple, and orange corduroys. And I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm done with that, but I've moved on. You know, we, this year we did alligator jeans and suede. Um, actually, I started that about two years ago, doing suede and leather and alligator and python jeans. Um, I think I, I need to visit for the suede jeans. Us Weekly or people that leather jeans are now the new hot accessory for men. I mean, I was doing this two years ago, and again, they were making fun of me for the way I was doing it. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of always ahead of, of it a little bit. People, we'll be right back. Um, we got more to this story. This is really interesting. So, see. You. Hey people, this is Stevie for the LA Story and we're back with Jay Koss and we're talking about his store and his brand of menswear. And he mentioned that, well, I mentioned actually that most women dress the men in their lives. And guys, don't even tell me that that's not true because I do know it. And I actually used to write for Men's National, so yeah, I know it. The fact is, is that for Jay, most of the men, most of the people in his store who buy are men, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. And interestingly enough, even in the, we're very, you know, obviously our, our prices are high end, so we get a, 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 a big um, celebrity and wealthy clientele that normally would shop with stylists. They also come in there on their own, without their stylists, more than they do come in with stylists, and less with their wives than probably other men's shops. And I think that's because we sell men's clothing, we sell gentlemen's clothing. Um, I think the type of women that are buying clothing for men um, rather than the man buying his own clothing are buying from these mega so-called luxury brands that market a sort of um, men's slash kind of extension of a woman's line that they market through the media as how they think men should dress and then women see it in their magazines and they go and buy it. That's not who we sell. We sell we sell men that like to dress. Okay. And like beautiful clothing and like beautiful fabric, care where it's made, care how it fits. Um, unlike most stores, um, women don't usually go into a store and ask where something is made or where is this cashmere from. Every day someone that comes into my shop will say, is, where's this cashmere? Is it Scottish? Is it Italian? Where is it made? Interesting. Yeah. Today where everything's made in China and of some odd construction of cashmere. They're not used to finding a 100% Scottish cashmere sweater made in Scotland or made in Italy. That's so, true. Yeah, And they like the story. 
It's a nice story. It's a great story. And it's a great thing that they can sit there and say when somebody says, oh, nice, nice sweater. Yeah, it's Scottish cashmere. Yeah. It's really, you know, from Scotland. Yes. So, now you have another occupation. I do. And you're a chef. I am. Which, if you watch that video that is in the embed, you'll see him cooking, which is, how long have you been doing that? Forever. Okay. From, you know, the day that I could watch my mother cook, so, always, and my grandparents. Love it. Yeah. And what and do you like to cook most? I like to um, sort of go to the green market and let the green market tell me what to cook that day. Okay. I love to find, you know, seasonal food, and I just love to walk around. Uh, like I said before, I'm a creative visual junkie, so to go to the green market and all of a sudden pass a vegetable I've never seen um, and not be afraid of it and speak to the farmer and say, what can I do with this? And then to go home and sort of create some dish around this vegetable is, is for me, is like, you know, heaven. So. Okay. So let me, I, I'm going to ask you some, a sort of eyeball question. Okay. Let's trend spot a little bit. Mm -hmm. What do you think men should be wearing in terms of for spring, fall, 2011? Um, I think spring, uh, spring, summer should be very comfortable. Um, you should look at ease like the weather is kind of telling you to be. It's a time to sort of relax and kick back a little bit. People tend to less work a little bit less as the weather gets nicer. And I think less structure but still tailored is something that um, I know I'm going for with my brand when it comes to that, that, that time of year. Okay, and fall? Fall, um, I think it's time to, to dress up again and to bring color back again. I've always done color. When the economy hit in 2008, 2009, um, I, I, I think people were afraid of color because it was sort of, you know, calling attention to the fact that you were buying a, a pink cashmere jacket. And I think people, kind of their mood can be told through their, what they're wearing. Mm -hmm. And so they, they were feeling gray, they wore gray, and they wore dark colors. And I think now it's time to, to dress up again and to um, embrace like the beauty of color and to um, dress up in the sense of being super tailored. Does it mean you have to wear a tie? No, but I, there's been this major um, shift in, the, in, in menswear where I think two years ago, three years ago, um, even four or five years ago, the Italians sort of came in and, and brought this Neapolitan craze and everyone was into these um, hand-tailored Neapolitan suits. And then things started to go down towards this hipster sort of, um, I'm too cool look um, yeah. to, 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 to wear anything tailored. And I think now it's time to sort of combine the two. Okay. And, and um, not fake it. See, it's new for us. It's new for Americans to to um, to dress and to feel that you're supposed to dress to an Italian or to a Frenchman or even to an Englishman uh, who might not even be particularly stylish. Getting dressed in the morning and looking good is for us like brushing our teeth. Right. So we'll be. Thanks for joining Stevie Wilson on LA Story. Feel free to check out other podcasts and videos. Bookmark it now, www.la-story.com.